we move on and we talk about this news which is fucking amazing because it made me reminisce about some great and not so great memories so this is courtesy of hypebeast and it says 21 mercer nike lab 21 mercer is closing next year and if you know anything about 21 mercer you know it was like the premier nike store in new york for a while and um, we had a similar store here in london called 1948 in shoreditch which i worked in i was one of the first group of staff that worked in there when it opened up in 08 that was to tie in with the beijing olympics and the whole premise behind it was that it was sort of like the first nike direct to consumer place that you could go and buy limited edition shoes because before that you couldn't really buy limited edition tier zero shoes at a nike store you basically could only buy them for the most part in like other retailers like tier zero kind of retailers and whatnot they had the weird times where they had little pop-up and activation things that you could buy limited edition shoes in nike town but for the most part you could only buy them um you know um, at these other stores so when 1948 opened the premise behind it was that they would sell nike sportswear stuff that's also something that started which was basically nike's version of streetwear but more sportswear you know what i mean like loads of baseball jackets loads of pants jackets and whatnot with loads of like um athletic type features like invisible pockets seamless things um tape seams uh waterproof fabrics gore-tex you know all these different core cool things like something you'd you'd maybe maybe you know used to be seeing at a brand like acronym or something right um loads of uh tech technical functional wear um or technical functional sportswear whatever it may be called so um i spent a lot of time working in that place and it was really really you know a good time but um that obviously closed a while back i think it may have closed in 2018 or something the one in london and this one in new york mercer the 21 mercer street store is finally going to close next year so it's been a while since it's been open so it follows on here it says because your oh, hype beast says following uh sorry following our favor in recent years are following falling jesus christ the spelling on this thing right um it's still the same one as i when i used to work there it was, it was the same people couldn't write for shit there was really no proofreading or you know editing or copywriting for the most part people there you just kind of threw stuff up there crazy um and wh when i was working there it was all run off wordpress I'm not sure if they're doing it the same thing but maybe i it is it says here um uh following falling out of favor in recent years nike lab 21 mercer uh, street soho is now set to close next year according to reports serving one of the sportswear giants main sneaker boutique locations and a special activation space in the past the 21 mercer which opened in 2008 served as an integral part of sneaker culture in new york though the destination for sneakers has fallen out of favor with the nearby opening of nike soho in 2016 reports now note that nike lab 21 mercer is expected to shut its doors for good come january 2023 although not much information regarding the space and surface has been revealed that the closure comes around the time of nike's lease of, of the end of nike's lease on the location nike is encouraging staff to continue employment of the company while activations will uh, move to other locations that didn't happen to me by the way when they ended up closing, no, not closing, sorry. That's what happened to me. I had to go through my history there. If I'm not mistaken, the reason why I wasn't working any there anymore is because at the time when I was hired, they went through two or three main heads of the Nike, I think it's I think it's energy marketing. That's usually the ones that do all the cool stuff. So they had three different people working on that role whilst I was there. And that meant, obviously, when the third person came in, they wanted their own people in that store so they got rid of basically everybody except the manager i think at the time which was super annoying and then got their own staff in and then soon after it kind of closed which i was kind of punching here about and happy about because like oh go fuck yourself you know what i mean but in general we weren't really nike employees anyway we were always kind of seen as contractors we didn't really get paid directly by nike we got paid by another company who then invoiced nike it was just a weird thing in general i think they had to get around it in terms of like some laws around selling stuff i don't know what it was but essentially we weren't ever nike employees and because we were never in the office for the most part apart from some other times we had meetings in there or we kind of report back to marketing team here and there but for the most part we spent most of our time in a store and you know you had to be a nike you know you had to kind of if you want if a nike employee maybe had to come there to see us but in general we didn't really get to see many of the nike employees so it was very hard to kind of ingratiate ourselves in there um and then i guess when it did close they kind of just didn't think about us too much and they kind of just moved on maybe we didn't make, make a good enough impression i'm not too sure but that's really good that they're kind of doing that and kind of helping them out in that way and then um brendan dune actually wrote a pretty decent article about the whole thing here on complex which i'm going to get up i've had an exit oh i did i think i think i accidentally clicked x in there did i accidentally click x i think i did uh 
And then Brendan Dune obviously also wrote a pretty decent article about the whole entire thing, titled Nike Lab 21 Mercer Closing for Good in January. It reads as follows. Um, sneaker industry sources told us that complex that Nike lease on the 21 Mercer space was um, expiring in January that the store was set to close. In response to the inquiry on Friday, Nike confirmed that it would close the store in January 2023. While it will be closed in 21 Mercer, its physical space will be carrying its community focused vision through key activations and our existing Nike, our existing, sorry, NYC retail locations, our digital ecosystem, as well as our marketplace partners. Nike said that the store closes staff are being encouraged to continue employment at Nike by applying for other roles at Nike, which is fucking brilliant. The store opened in 2008 as 21 Mercer. Its debut marked a by a block party attended by the likes of Spike Lee and Roger Federer. Mercer was famous to part for his bespoke first services, a sneaker customization offering that lets shop shoppers book an appointment to design Nike Force Ones or MX Ones for around $800. Do you remember that? There was a time in life where Nike ID was only invite only. You couldn't do it as easy as you can now where you can basically just select you know colors online and stuff um and kind of do like a paint by number shoe back in the day you had to kind of be invited to go down there but it was a pretty sick experience because usually you had to kind of go down there and you'd kind of meet people who were maybe interns or coming up in the nike flipping design space team thing whatever maybe in terms of making things and they'd run you through the materials they'd kind of give you help in terms of what colors work best together applications finishes all that really good stuff and usually if i remember correctly too because it was the 800 dollar mark one you could change loads of different things you could even change the eyelets instead of having metal rings around them you could change the stitching you could do loads of things that you can't effectively do always on the nike id thing now i think they kind of ramped it up and basically give you most of the options online but back in the day you can only do you know the, the panels you could only change online and then the bespoke thing was only to change like the extra stuff like maybe the insoles the stitching the tongue colors the different laces maybe you can have the sh each shoe be a different color as well all that good stuff happened so it was a pretty sick service to be fair and i think if they brought it around nowadays considering how big sneaker culture is now especially sneaker customization i think it'll go down really well but maybe they have more better data than me in the back end that says it's not as actually that true but it continues uh, in its early days, Nike 21 Mercer was a Nike-owned sneaker boutique and marketing tool, but it also kind of a meeting place for Nike Streetwear con con how heavy that word is but yeah definitely the same thing in london that's what i loved about most about the store it was truly a hub says samantha groteski who was one of the original staff members of the store so people who visited became like permanent fixtures and included extended store staff members so yeah you know you could get like a nice little piece on there about it and i had a similar sort of experience like i said beforehand like i was one of the first employees that worked at the 1948 store here in london um it was a pretty sick time not going to lie and it was really cool because that was one of the first jobs i got um outside of like working regular retail jobs where i kind of got it off the strength of my kind of personality and the fact that i was around and the fact that i had a bit of a name in the scene I was on forums a lot. I had a pretty popular blog back then. And I was just being kind of like a, you know, a man about town or a kid about town at that time. And I kind of befriended one of the main people at Nike who was working there at the time. He kind of took a shining to me and then basically recommended me for the store that they were about to open. I had no idea they were going to open it. And he basically recommended it, to rec put me forward for it. I didn't have to do a presentation for it, like a whole activation presentation type thing um, was selected and basically got the job and joined like a few other people that kind of were very prominent in the scene doing it too. And it's funny because everybody that kind of was working in that place has kind of gone on to do their own little cool thing creatively, you know, whether it's consulting, being an assistant, being a uh, model, being an artist, whatever, DJs, everyone that I've worked with in that store has kind of gone on to do amazing things. And even our original manager has now gone on, I think he works at Asics now or something, as one of the people who kind of, as heading up all the quote-unquote special projects they do over there. So it worked out pretty well. Um, but it also was a kind of bittersweet time because, like I said, we weren't really Nike employees. We were kind of, we were effectively, um, what's that called it? We were effectively, um, what's that word called? Oh you know, I, I basically said the word before, but we weren't exactly Nike employees. 
we didn't really have any kind of connection with Nike overall. So we kind of just had the store. And then at the time as well, the store was going through some weird politics and I saw what kind of sneaker stores are actually like on the inside and it kind of grossed me out in terms of, you know, the backdooring of shoes, in terms of the scratching your back, I'll scratch your backs type of stuff. It kind of really annoyed me because at the end of the day, I'm always still going to be a customer first and a fan first um, as much as it's as I enjoy kind of being on the inside and being kind of let at, let in at the front and getting VIP and getting stuff put aside to me. I like all that stuff. It's fine. Don't get me wrong. But still, my, the main reason why I came into someone I love it mostly is as, as a fan. I think every fan should have the ability to be able to buy the things that they want to buy, um, especially if it's kind of fair. And I guess in those kind of stores, it wasn't because some of the stuff that was getting dropped was only if you're dropping in limited, limited quantities. And then certain people would find out and you wouldn't even know how they would find out in terms of how much quantity we got. And they'd be like getting the stuff before the store even opened. They'd be in the back trying it on. And you'd be thinking to yourself like, rah, boy. So all those times I used to wait and queue in, in, outside the shops trying to get hold of some limited edition shoes. I had no idea that the time that I wasted sleeping here was legitimately a waste of time because somebody has already accounted for my size, you know, from the comfort of their own home. They're in their own bed sleeping under a duvet and here I am on the street on this flipping horrible camping chair hoping that I get, can get a size 10. But it's already been accounted for because it's been backdoored. So I kind of hated that stuff. Even though I partook in it myself and I kind of, you know, got some favours out of it myself, it kind of made me disgruntled. And I think that maybe help my kind of standing in the place my attitude wasn't the best I kind of just you know kind of became a little bit of a maybe bad influence in terms of how my mood was overall because I didn't like all that kind of clouty clicking up kind of too cool for school shit um and then I think whilst I was there actually maybe it was whilst I was there the original guy that actually recommended me for the role um and I ended up having a big falling out with him and that kind of eventually led to me kind of just you know, you know what fuck the scene I'm not involved anymore this stuff is absolutely annoying and really frustrating because you know I, I kind of came into it wanting to be the next flipping Hiroshi Fujiwara or you know looking up to the James Jebbias of this world looking up to the Michael Koppelman of this world and then you get in it and you see all these kind of middle management kind of like you know entry level people acting like they're bosses when they're not really or just having incredibly big egos when all they do is put on party and DJ it's like bruv like it's not that serious do you know what I mean like no one gives a shit and the egos were just incredible and I think one time I had like a really really bad you know kind of interaction with this person I'm not even sure what actually happened to Dita but I do remember it kind of ending in a kind of shouting match and I remember just thinking you know what that might have been partly my fault maybe majority my fault but the reason what, what I'm going to do, because I can't control the flipping actions of others, I'm just going to take myself away from this because I know clearly back in the day I used to live for this. I would be up outside queuing outside of a sketch or whatever. It may be a place where they're doing these, you know, kind of guestless only party shits. And I'll be happy to stand there and be talking with my friends. But but it got to a time I was like, no, nah, I don't want this. I want to be an absolute participant of this. I want to be affecting culture on the inside, but also not by doing this. I want to be actually doing things. And I thought, you know what? The only way I could do this is by stepping away um, because this is starting to make me toxic. So then I ended up kind of stepping away from that and kind of end up doing my own thing. And to be fair, it kind of did end up hurting me, I think, overall, because a lot of the people that kind of stuck with it ended up getting some pretty cushy jobs, the kind of jobs where you don't actually do for much. You just kind of, you know, um, you kind of uh, coast along on your core factor, which at the time I had a lot of kind of clout tokens in my little piggy bank that I could have used. But I guess once you step away and you're not around, um, people kind of forget you, you kind of, you know, disappear into relevancy and then people kind of, other people come in and replace you and kind of do the thing. So all well and good. But overall in terms of life, happiness and stuff in my terms of direction and my output now i think it's for the best i think if i were hanging around there i probably would have been disgruntled i probably would end up, end up like some of those old bitter guys that are still in the scene that are still begging stores for connects to buy shoes and they're flipping that supreme trying to beg friend with the sales assistants and they're just cringy right they were at all the flipping sceny things events wise in terms of art basel and paris fashion week men's and shit and just hanging around you, know, you just see them around you don't know what they do they just hang around hoping for somebody to give them a little a little inner or something and i'm glad i didn't do that i'm glad i kind of made my own way my own in my own way yeah it's kind of a bit you know it's a bit all over the place maybe not the most polished thing in the world maybe it doesn't really have the best direction in the world but still i did it on my own and you know i'm happy with that i didn't have to kind of you know 
depend on these guys because these guys also are the ones that if you owe them a favor they'll definitely let you know do you know what I mean they'll definitely hold it over your head and kind of use it to you know kind of come back and you know try and curry like I remember that happened actually at, at 1948 I think it was around a time when what Air Force oh it was the Air Force One that dropped originally I'm not sure if you remember it was sort of like a brown boot Air Force One it kind of looked like a Timberland it was like all leather and it was really nice and I guess at the time we all kind of liked it in the store everyone kind of bought a pair to kind of have and I think at the time too we had an amazing discount there we had to get I think we got like two free two staff two free shoes each season plus the discount so yeah, I, ended up, I had so many shoes back then it was absolutely insane um, I remember this brown pair of shoes was really popular and I guess because we all liked them whoever I didn't like at the time I was working at Nike basically found out a way to get us all a pair before they dropped but then at the time i kind of thought this is a bit weird because this guy's really slimy and then it turned into him basically having a favor over our heads so that he basically then ended up doing this thing which was quite clever but also really kind of nasty where because he ended up getting all of us these shoes that we wanted he ended up then basically having us owe him a favor each of us the manager the other staff members so basically five of us all owed him a favor so he could call up and say hey is agassino there and have this film done done. Hey, is that guy there? Have that done, have that done, have that done. It was kind of awful to see in real time. Like that's how the scene works. Um, to see it kind of happen in real life. But it was also good because I got to bump into people like James Jebbia from Supreme. I spoke to him for a couple of minutes when he came to visit the store. That was absolutely sick. And it was cool too because when I got to speak to him, it was good to get that reaffirmation that I always knew that the people that actually make the stuff, the actual people that are like, you know, the ones that are important, the founders of these companies, the creative directors, uh, the CEOs, the ones that are actually running the business, they are always safe. It's the ones who are just, you know, the fucking receptionist, the styling assistant, the photographer's assistant, all these flipping, you know, ex auxiliary characters are usually the cunts because for the most part, they know maybe deep down that their job could get taken at any time. So they don't, you know, they're kind of wary of, outside people because that could potentially be a threat to your role which i get but just be cool man be cool it's not that serious it's just clothes and trainers it's not that serious and if you're framing your entire personality around trainers and clothes anyway you are probably a wild lad do you know what i mean you probably need to get some better hobbies um that doesn't involve you know plants and shit like something else like actually hobbies that involve other humans that involve you going to different places or maybe meeting some regular people that aren't always involved in cool industries and shit because that was also something that used to bug me all the conversations in there just revolved around sh photo shoots and magazines and stuff I was like come on bruv like you guys must just watch like trash tv no one really played sports there or watched sports or watched football there was no good football banter everything was dumb like it's just it just really pissed me off in a way so i'm kind of glad it kind of ended the way it did even though i was one of the first people to kind of get let go the other the other group of guys ended up hanging on a lot longer than i did but still you know the fact that we were contractors then so that's what i meant contractors um, meant that we were always getting paid late because we had the invoice it was just a it, it was a real nightmare behind the scenes it looked quite cool on paper on the outside but behind the scenes there's a lot of flipping thunderstorms and rainstorms that we had to kind of navigate through but the parties were good in there all the activation events were absolutely sick um they really kind of you know um opened up the checkbook when it came to that sort of stuff and i think the first time i went back there actually ironically enough because i vowed to never go back there after they fucking let me go um they didn't actually let me go. It was more so the person who came in to replace the other energy marketing person when their own people. So it wasn't like they told me go fuck off. It was like they just didn't tell me to come back again because, you know, we were basically, you know, contractors. So we got like a week by week rotor. And in one week, I didn't get a rotor. So I didn't go in. <laughs> but I remember I vowed not to ever go there again. Like, fuck them, I'm never going there again. And the one time that I did visit there again, you know when, when that was? when the Nike 10 collaboration happened, the Virgil Abloh collection. So that happened, and then somehow I guess I won um, the first slots, which were, I think I won them off the back of getting into one of the panel discussions. I think it was the one with, he did with Kim Jones, I think. I think it was that one. So I got into that one, and then that allowed you to also buy a shoe. So I ended up having to, I ended up buying two actually. I don't know how I got the other one, but I ended up having to buy two. I resold one, kept one. And that was the first time I went back to the store because I had to go pick them up there. Crazy, isn't it? Fucking crazy. The first time I ever went back to 94 years was to go pick up the, the flipping Jordan ones, um, the off-white Jordan ones that came out uh, during the whole Nike 10 collaboration thing. But yeah, man, RIP 21 Mercer, um, you know, 
you probably hanged on a lot longer than you probably should have, but you definitely probably played a big role in your local scene, the same as 1948 did when I was coming up. And, you know, as bad as it ended, it was really a cool shop anywhere in store, you know, allowed me to meet some interesting people, probably set me on my journey that I'm on at the moment now. Who knows? I probably wouldn't have been here if I wouldn't have gone through that kind of education and schooling, even though I fell out of a lot of people and a lot of them, if I was to see them now, I probably would fight them just because I'm that kind of guy. I know it's just bad. I kind of hold a lot of that kind of stuff inside of me sometimes and I let it out all at one time so it can kind of get a bit sticky but still um, I'm happy I did um, go through that situation so big up everybody associated with 20th anniversary hopefully you guys do actually get um, you know the benefit of applying for Nike roles that I didn't get because that's a pretty sick actually they're doing that really really cool on them to do that actually and even if you don't it's still a good thing to put in your CV because people are always interested in those kind of spaces and how they work because essentially all the new things you're seeing now with pop-up shops and you know co-working spaces they kind of come from the back of that that was sort of like the first iteration of a pop-up store a, you know a multi-use space um you know the furniture there was no permanent fixtures in there if i think if i remember correctly just a stock room everything could kind of be everything was modular it kind of be moved around the places and stuff it was really really interesting everything around it um so yeah big up everybody associated with it you guys are all sick hopefully you guys go on to bigger and better things off the back of it bigger and better things